Hello folks, welcome back to I Like Motorbikes. My name is Tom and today I'm hoping to get the third and final part of this CB500 build done. Now, if you've seen the other videos, you'll know how big a task I had on my hands. And sadly, with how much time I didn't have to get the bike done, because race weekend is very close now, I haven't filmed everything I've done. So what I'm gonna do is quickly catch you up on the bits that I have filmed. Then once we've done that, I'm gonna walk you around the bike and show you things that I've done that I haven't filmed. So let me catch you up, get you up to speed, and I'll see you in a second. Together with my good friend Andy, we effortlessly disassembled the front end of the bike, removing the bars, forks, and yokes. The next job was to strip down the forks themselves as they would not been maintained in a very long time. I replaced the fork seals and a bushing in each fork, then reassembled the front end using a heavier oil to increase the stiffness, and also decreased the air gap to compensate for the additional forces that would be seen on track. I can hear you all asking, well, what have I done? Well, actually quite a lot, although it doesn't necessarily look like it. Now, I've been painting, I've been painting the um, oil belly pan, catch pan, the radiator shrouds that I had. Um, I've been through and I had to make a little bracket for my rain light to fit on and now wired up my rain light, so it does this. Hopefully you can see that. So my rain light is in, I had to wire all that in. Um, I also, because I've removed the ignition switch, I've bypassed that, but by bypassing it, I put in a relay to do it properly. So now I've got a little button on my dash to show uh, when my ignition is on and then the bike will crank. So when it's off, it doesn't do anything. When it's on, it'll crank the bike. Um, so at least that's a nice tidy install. Um, I've also got my rev counter on the dash now. Um, I fitted this front number uh, board bracket system um, that I bought from Grant Whitaker. So thanks very much to you because I was going to make one, but I was fast running out of time and actually that was a lot quicker. Uh, there's a whole host of bits and bobs that I've done, like some wire locking on the engine case sliders. You need that um, if you're using these bonded type, not the bolted type. Um, it, has to, it has to be done for the regulations. So that's now been done. Um, things like the oil filler cap, sump plug, all those bits, all those have been lock wired as well. So I'm now a lot closer to having a race ready bike, although as you may have noticed, the bike is not on a paddock stand, it's currently on a side stand, and that's some of the next jobs. I still have to cut the side stand bracket off and bypass the side stand switch. I still need to cut off uh, some little bits on the back um, where the centre stand previously was. I chopped it, but not very well, uh, because I did that, if you remember, um, on the Autumn Park track day. And if you haven't seen that video, you can click up here or there somewhere and you'll be able to go and watch that video where I ride around with John McGuinness. Um, so I need to tidy that up because I didn't do a very good job with it. Uh, I still have the tires that I need to change over to the control tires because I don't have those fitted yet. Um, and we go racing in just a few days time. So there's not a lot of time and I've got a lot of things to do. So without further ado, I'm gonna crack on. Wish me luck. That didn't go well. I purposely laid the bike flat so I had perfect access to complete the removal of the side and centre stand mounts. Take a closer look and you'll see the shiny untreated metal that resulted from my angle grinding work. Don't miss that shark fin either. I secured it to the bottom of the swinging arm with rivets, fulfilling yet another racing safety requirement and checking it off of my list. 
The bike was becoming more of a race bike by the minute. The front end was finished and thanks to my sponsor Martin from PDQ Precision for the gorgeous brake lever guard. Following that, it was time for the race tail fairing, which required some fashioning of bracketry and then the final checks of the rear wheel and braking system that meant we were both ready to head to Brands Hatch. Some of you may remember me saying I'd weigh all the parts that came off in part two of the build. Well, here we are. So that's about 11 and a half kilos. So we've lost about 11, uh, what did I say? 11 and a half kilos in all of that bump. There is also the front fairing, the stay and the headlight. I guess there's another kilo there. Um, let's say a kilo and a half to round it up. So. 13 kilos overall we lost from the race bike project, which is pretty good. Um, that's not including though the exhaust. So the standard exhaust weighs about six kilos. So if the standard exhaust weighs six kilos, I think my aftermarket one is probably about two kilos. You know, let's let's round it up and let's be fair, say three kilos, because I haven't weighed it. Uh, I may try and weigh it after this to be sure. Um, and if I do, then I'll put the real figure here. But overall then, it's probably at least 16 kilos that have been dropped from the weight of the CB500. I'll leave you with some of the action I experienced at my induction to the wonderful world of racing at the iconic Brands Hatch. A circuit which leaves little room for rest and suits the CB500 so well. I'm sure you'll love watching it almost as much as I enjoy being there. Until next time, ride safe. Championship for 2022, and uh, today will be round one.